Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Mateusz Przybylski from Jagiellonian University in Kraków, Poland. In the beginning, I would like to thank the organizers of the second symposium on machine learning and dynamical systems for the opportunity of giving this talk. Today, I'm going to talk about some preliminary outcomes towards the understanding of the Conley theory and its potential development in very general context of binary re relation. I will begin with brief motivation behind these results. Uh, then I present some details on the Shimcha category and functor. And finally, full classification of Shimcha category for the category of binary relation on finite sets will be shown. Let's get started. Conley index is a topological invariant of isolated invariant sets used for the analysis, description and classification of dynamical systems. In particular, uh, it is frequently applied to prove the existence of stationary and periodic trajectories, heteroclinic connections and chaotic invariant sets. Um, an extension of Conley index theory to multivalue dynamics with acyclic values enables algorithmic study of dynamical systems by means of interval arithmetic, a tool for providing rigorous acyclic enclosures of trajectories. Uh, however, uh, this approach requires that the dynamical system is known via explicitly given analytic formulas. A differential equation if time is continuous or a generator if time is discrete. Uh, in recent years there is growing interest in the study of dynamical systems known only from finite samples when no analytic description is available. In this setting a construction of a multi-valued enclosure is also possible but one often faces a uh, some kind of dichotomy. Either the values are too big to guarantee isolation or not acyclic. The acyclicity is needed to assure that the index map, a homology homomorphism constituting an intermediate tool in the computation of the Conley index, is well defined. As recent research shows, in some cases a well-defined index map may be constructed even in absence of acyclicity. However, in a general situation the acyclicity may not be guaranteed and instead of an index map one obtains a linear relation. A natural question arises here whether a Conley index construction is possible with index map replaced by this linear relation. In this talk, we take a first step to answer this question. We study the fundamental tool in the construction of the Conley index, namely the Schimczak functor, in the setting of relations on finite combinatorial spaces. Conley index for relation would be useful not only in the study of sampled dynamical systems, but also in the study of general relation. Such general relations also induce multivalued dynamics, but one cannot expect that values are acyclic. A good example is World Wide Web with links between the pages generating some kind of dynamics. Uh, having that in mind, we showed that Shimchak factor applied to category of relations results in, in the category whose objects may be effectively classified. Moreover, the representatives of some classes may be significantly simplified, both in the data used to represent the class and the structure used to describe it. For instance, some relation, multivalued in their nature, can be represented by single-valued maps. So, let's go into the details. Mm. By the way, uh, on the slide you see some references. It is not a complete literature of the topic, it's rather just a small part of it. Before we start with Shimchak's constructions, we need an auxiliary category, category of endomorphisms. So let uh, e script be an arbitrary category. 
by end of a script with the node category whose objects are pairs of the form capital E E, where capital E is an object from a script category and small e is a morphism of a script category from capital E to itself. Such pairs constitutes objects of the category of endomorphism. And morphisms between two pairs, EE and FF, are all this morphism from a script category between capital E and capital F, which commutes with E and F. And of E script is a well defined category and it is the first step to construct Shimcha category. Notice here uh, that E script category is an arbitrary category, so you may use any category you like. In order to build Shimcha category, again we start with arbitrary category E script. We denote Shimcha category by a shim of E script. Objects of Shimcha category are the same as objects of category of endomorphism of E script. And morphism between E E and E prime E prime are a bit complicated. First, uh, we take the set of all morphism between these objects from end of E script category. Second, we introduce relation on the product of that set and natural numbers, uh, I mean natural numbers with uh, zero here, in such a way that two pairs are in the relation if the equality from the bottom of the slide holds for some natural k. k. Such relation is an equivalence relation on the product. Mm, maybe it is not clear at first glance why such vert relation is introduced, but roughly speaking, this equality guarantees that some endomorphism, some endomorphisms become isomorphisms and after that transition you still have a category. In other words, you may see Shimcha category construction as a process of localization about some specific set of morphisms. Uh, finally, set of morphisms between objects E E and E prime E prime is the quotient set of the product by the equivalence relation. A composition of morphisms is defined like that. We compose morphism phi and phi prime and add m to m prime. And the identity morphism for an object E E is the identity on E and zero. Such category is well defined and we call it Shimchak category for e script category. Uh, the name Shimchak category was used first time in the paper uh, Shift Equivalence and the Conley Index by Franks and Richardson in 1999. With that category, uh, there is also associated a functor which goes from a category of endomorphisms to Shimchak category. We call it Shimchak functor. It fixes objects and takes morphism phi into the class phi and zero. Now uh, let's have a look at normal functors. This family of functors enables us to define the Conley index in proper way. I mean, if we have two different index pairs for the isolated invariant set, then we expect the Conley index to be the same in both cases. So in other words, it means that two specific objects will be isomorphic in target category. To be precise, L is normal functor if L of E is an isomorphism in C script category for each morphism E from the pair capital E E to itself. As you can see, such a specific morphism in the Shimcha category has an inverse given by the class identity on E and 1. So the class E0 is invertible in the category. Therefore, Shimchak functor is a normal functor and even more 
because Shimchang factor is the most general normal factor in the sense that any other normal factor factorizes into Shimchang factor and some uniquely determined factor. This universality property of Shimchang factor gives hope that if we understand what's going on there, then we may easier develop some Conley type index for any category we are interested in. Also, this property may help us understand to what extent the acyclicity of values in multivalued Conley theory is essential. So, let's now fix our arbitrary category to a real category, that is a category of finite sets as objects and binary relation as morphisms. It is well-defined category, so let's have a closer look at Shimcha category for this particular category. A composition of relations is defined as usual. Nth power of the relation is simply nfold composition of the sum relation. Uh, we need a few more notions here. Uh, by generalized domain of relation R, we mean an intersection over the domains of all powers of R. Similarly, generalized image of R is the intersection over the images of all powers of R. And invariant part of R is an intersection of generalized domain and image of R. The first fact concerning relations and its generalized domain and image is that there exists natural number Q that for any p greater or equal than q, generalized domain and image stabilize. It is quite intuitive fact because R is defined on finite set. Uh, in Shimcha category, we can restrict our consideration to so-called white relations, that is, relations defined on their invariant parts. Uh, this is because of the second proposition, uh, which states that any object in Shimchak category is isomorphic to the object consisting of invariant part of the relation and relation restricted to its invariant part. Uh, to see uh, what is the difference between such objects, let's look at the example. By the way, uh, any relation can be identified with a directed graph. I use digraph for short. Elements of the set where the relation is defined are identified with digraph vertices and particular element of the relation, that is a pair, is identified with an edge from vertex identified with first component of the pair to the vertex identified with the comp uh, second component of the pair. Representation of binary relations as digraphs seems to be more convenient, especially in examples. So let's go back to differences between the object and its invariant counterpart. Uh, roughly speaking, relation restricted to its invariant part is a relation with trimmed all of these parts which are not between strongly connected path components. As on the figure, to get invariant part, we have to get rid of two vertices at the bottom and the one in the upper right of the graph. In order to get relation restricted to its invariant part, we get rid of the edges containing removed vertices. In Shimchak category, objects equipped with such two relation, relations are isomorphic. Relations are defined on finite sets, so it's natural to expect that any relation somehow stabilizes. Uh, indeed, as proposition claims, for any relation R, there exists natural number P such that P pth power of R is equal to any multiple of P power of R. We call such an P an eventual period, period of R. This eventual period somehow exhausts possible different up to isomorphism objects built from the relation. This states the theorem. Object equipped with R to S power is isomorphic to object with R 
to s plus p power and with r to s plus any multiple of p power. Now let's have a look at specific class of rela relations. R is strongly path connected relation if and only if the digraph associated with R is strongly path connected. We use here path connectedness because we also consider loops as strongly path connected components. Greatest common divisor of lengths of all cycles in the digraph associated with strongly path connected relation is called a period of R. For strongly path connected relation R, there is a relation tilde R involving the period of R. We say that X and Y are related if every path from X to Y in the digraph has length equal to zero modulo Q. It turns out that this is an equivalence relation. Let's consider an example. A digraph from figure is strongly path connected, so the relation is period of the digraph is equal to 2 because cycles have lengths 2 or 4 at the zero. In fact, you can restrict period computations to a simple, cycle, uh, simple cycles lengths, that is the cycles without repeated its vertices. Uh, vertices in the same color are in the same class of tilde r. Indeed, length of the path from vertex in yellow at the bottom to the vertex at the top is equal to 0 modulo 2. So they are in the same equivalence class. The same is with vertices marked in blue. Now let be the complete set of representatives of all equivalence classes of tilde r. Complete here means that it contains exactly one element from each class of tilde r. Let us define a multivalued map f like this. For any x from x, match the set r to p plus 1 of x in, uh, intersected with b. Uh, we refer here to value notation with respect to the relation. By this we mean the set of all these elements of x which are related with x by r to p plus 1 relation. This notation is particularly useful in proofs. Uh, okay, let's go on. Mm, map f uh, is set valued, but in fact this set always will be a singleton because of the intersection uh, with the complete, complete set B. So we can define single valued map G by easy identification of singleton with its element. All these results in theorem which states, which states that object equipped with strongly path connected relation is isomorphic to object equipped with a map. At this example, on the uh, left, the, there is a relation R with period 3. By colors, we marked elements from the same class of tilde R relation. Taking as a set B any complete set for the tilde R relation and constructing multivalued map F as on previous slide, uh, we get G map like this on the right uh, hand side. Notice that re relation R has multivalued nature. Any vertex marked on yellow is related with two vertices. But in Shimchan category, you can represent strongly path connected relations as single valued maps. Now uh, let's take a look at objects equipped with an arbitrary relation R. Such object is isomorphic to object consisting of the set of all vertices in strongly path connected components and the relation R bar induced by R and its eventual period. 
So for objects with arbitrary re relation R, we can restrict our consideration to some relation defined on the set of all vertices in strongly path-connected components of R. Relation R from the example has uh, three uh, strongly path-connected components, the head, the belt, and the left leg of Orion. Uh, on the basis of the proposition, R induces relation R bar, which looks like that on the right-hand side of figure. New relation reflects connections of the old, but, uh, but also adds some extra connections between components. Uh, we will deal with these connections in a moment, but for now one expects that this identification of strongly path-connected sub-digraphs with cyclic map uh, we mentioned before works also in the context of arbitrary relation, and that is true. If we denote by uh, CI strongly path-connected components of digraph of R, um, then we can consider a restriction RI of R to CI. And whole process, as with strongly path-connected relation, works again. Uh, we take complete complete set of representatives of each tilde Ri and I, uh, induce new relation F. This relation F is defined on the set B, and object XR is isomorphic to object BF in Shumchan category. We call object BF a canonical form of XR. Of course, canonical form is not uniquely determined. It depends on the choice of complete sets for relation tilde RI. Uh, notice uh, that uh, relation F in canonical form in general is not a single valued map. Here is, next, uh, here is next example. Objects equipped with both relations are isomorphic in Shumchak category. Canonical form relation on the right-hand side exhausts all possible connections between its components. Uh, it is because we use relation to the p plus 1 power, where p is its eventual per period. So we see that there is something with connections between components. Uh, so let BR be a canonical form of some object. We, def we define functions uh, Li like this. Um, in other words, Li measures kind of distance between elements x and x prime of each component in terms of iteration of r used to get from x to x prime. There is another family of relation tilde ij defined on bi times bj. Uh, roughly speaking, uh, it relates connections between two components i and j. Each relation tilde ij is an equivalence, uh, equivalence relation, so it means that connections between components are somehow classified. It turns out that isomorphisms in Shimcha category preserve strongly path-connected components and their periods. Moreover, isomorphisms also preserve number of different class connections between components realized by relation. Uh, this number is conveyed, conveyed by Lij function. So let's have a look at example. Mm, relation, relation R on the left realizes only one class of connections between its upper and lower component. Uh, but relation R prime on the right uh, realizes all two classes of connections between its upper and lower component. Okay, 
Uh, now we have all components which affect isomorphisms in Shimchak category. So we can classify objects up to isomorphism. Uh, we propose one form of the invariant which seems to be at least, co at least convenient during presentations. Mm, a classifying graph of object y r, uh, r uh, prime with canonical form br is transitive and acyclic, acyclic directed graph with labeled vertices and edges. Number of its vertices is equal to the number of strongly path connected, connected components of R. Edges are determined by different, uh, uh, different from zero L, I, J functions values, where I and J are vertices. Each vertex is labeled by the period of respective component and each edge ij is labeled by the value of lij function. Uh, now, isomorphic objects in Shimchak category for category of relations on finite sets have the, sa the same classifying graphs up to graph isomorphism preserving labels of vertices and edges. Classifying graphs of R and R prime, for example, have different labels on their only edge. So there is no any graph isomorphism preserving labels of these graphs. Hence, objects equipped with R and R, R prime are not isomorphic in Shimcha category for relations on finite sets. Okay, that's it. If you have any question or comments concerning the topic uh, I've tried to present, please don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you for your attention.